The Heinkel He-177 Greif, Griffin, was a long-range heavy bomber flown by the Luftwaffe during World War II. The introduction of the He-177 to combat operations was significantly delayed, by both problems with the development of its engines, and frequent changes to its intended role. Nevertheless, it was the only long-range, heavy bomber to become operational with the Luftwaffe during the war. The He-177 had a payload-slash-range capability similar to that of four-engine heavy bombers used by the Allies in the European theater. Work on the design began in response to a 1936 requirement, known as Bomber A, Citation Needed, issued by the RLM for a purely strategic bomber. Thus the He-177 was intended originally to be capable of a sustained bombing campaign against Soviet manufacturing capacity, deep inside Russia. In contrast to its heavy payload and very wide, 30 meters, 98 feet, planform, the specifications called for the design to have only two very powerful engines. To deliver the power required, the He-177 needed engines of at least 2,000 horsepower, 1,500 kilowatts. Engines of this type were new and unproven at the time. The Daimler-Benz DB606 power system that was selected, in conjunction with its relatively cramped nacelles, caused cooling and maintenance problems, such that the power plants became infamous for catching fire in flight, and contributing to the He-177 gaming nicknames from Luftwaffe aircrew such as Reichsführerzug, Reichsleiter, or Luftwaffenführerzug, Air Force Leiter. The type matured into a usable design too late in the war to play an important role. It was built and used in some numbers, especially on the Eastern Front where its range was particularly useful. It is notable for its use in mass raids on Veliki Luki in 1944, one of the late war heavy bombing efforts by the Luftwaffe. It saw considerably less use on the Western Front, although it played a role during Operation Steinbach, the Baby Blitz, against the UK in 1944. Operational History Beset by technical difficulties in development, the He-177 had a troubled history in service. Unduly demanding design requirements of long-range, high-speed, heavy bomb load, and the formerly required dive bombing capability compounded the problems. Although the He-177 entered service in 1942, it was far from operational. In an assessment of the aircraft on April 9, 1942, the newly activated Erprobung Staffel 177 reported that the Greif had good flying characteristics, but had unacceptable engine troubles and problems with its airframe strength. As an emergency measure, it was used to supply the encircled 6th Army at Stalingrad, where it was found to be unsuited for the transport role, carrying little more cargo than the smaller and more reliable Heinkel He-111, and proving useless for the evacuation of wounded. As a result, the He-177s reverted to bombing and flak suppression missions near Stalingrad. Only 13 missions were flown, and 7 He-177s were lost to fire without any action attributable to the enemy. As the war progressed, He-177 operations became increasingly ineffective. Fuel and personnel shortages presented difficulties, and He-177s were sitting on airfields all over Europe awaiting new engines or engine-related modifications. Of the 14 He-177 A3s, the primary subtype in use, that were sent out during Operation Steinbach, one suffered a burst tire, and eight returned with overheating or burning engines. Of the four that reached London, one was lost to night fighters. These aircraft were brand new, delivered a week before the operation and not fully flown in, because the air unit had moved to a new airfield the day before and lacked sufficient maintenance personnel and material. Constant attacks against Luftwaffe long-range combat units in France made continuous operations difficult. While Steinbach was unsuccessful, the He-177 did achieve some successes. During Steinbach crews typically carried two 1,800 kg, 3,970 pounds, and two 1,000 kg, 2,200 pounds, bombs. Climbing to 7,000 meters, 22,965 feet, while still over German territory, the He-177s approached the target in a shallow dive, both engines throttled back, the pilot putting his aircraft into a gliding descent to take it across the bomb release point at about 4,500 meters, 14,760 feet. After releasing the bombs the pilot reopened the throttles, but continued the descent at approximately 200 meters, 656 feet, per minute. The bombers typically re-entered German airspace at an altitude of 750 meters, 
2,460 feet, and headed back to base. By such means, the He-177s were able to keep up speeds of about 600 to 700 km per hour, 370 to 430 miles per hour, during their withdrawal phase. The higher speed and constant change of altitude made interceptions difficult, increasing the survivability of the aircraft, but decreased bombing accuracy and concentration. With an average loss rate of 60% for bomber aircraft types used in Operation Steinbach, the He-177's loss rate below 10% made it the most survivable bomber in the campaign. On the Eastern Front, the most notable action by the He-177 was a mass raid of some 87 aircraft against railway targets in the Beliki Luki area, about 450 kilometers, 280 miles, west of Moscow on July 19, 1944. The participating Staffeln flew in three large attack wedges of about 30 aircraft, each loaded with four 250 kilograms, 551 pounds, or two 500 kilograms, 1,102 pounds, bombs. 65, during this action, carried out in daylight at altitudes in excess of 6,000 meters, 19,690 feet, losses were relatively light. The Soviet Air Force, equipped mainly for low-level interception and ground attack roles, could do little to hinder the high-flying bombers. In common with most piston-engined German bombers, the He-177 was grounded from the summer of 1944 due to the implementation of the emergency fighter program as well as the Allied bombing of German fuel production facilities.